I'll hang out for another five seconds because I'll pop up. Because I just find it a little odd anyway. 21 seconds, 22, 23, 25. Starting soon. What do you mean starting soon? I came on like seven minutes early, bitch. What's up with that? Oh, there I am. Uh, uh, bingo. Perfect. Hey, folks. Okay, we're good to go. I switch back over and I'll start yakking while I'm waiting for the comments to come up. Hi, K Pell, Patel. Hi, Bill Barlow. Newman, Cats Alive. The Stevie B Show. Thank you, Bob. Fish Fan, Trout Bum. That's a great name, eh? Um, Diver Dude. Hey, bud. Char. You're just passing through. Soon ups. I say hi to everybody right quick here, but I gotta. I want to get started on this one. The Discovery Channel um, is unusual because it's such a big. It's such a big uh, network, right? The Discovery Channel and Dinos themselves. They're you know. Trace is not stupid. Like if you go look him up. You'll find out that his resume is like 20 pages long of short paragraphs about courses that he's taken and that he's mastered. Uh, he's not stupid. He's not naive and he's certainly not gullible. He's a well-crafted PR machine. And he was went to university to be a chemist and his name is Trace. So Trace, chemist, chemist right? You can see it. Hi, Pauline. Thank you. Hi, Twisted. See, man, Luke. My Jim Jack, Sydney, James, everybody came in that time, Stephen, Mark, Ketzer K, Michael, Nuda, Kevin, Huma, Checks and Balances, Nuda, Just Passing Through, Aviator 8, Michael, The Cucumber, Lonnie, Candace, whoo, we are all in that time, I'm sorry, uh, that was a pretty good run, I'll bring the screen down and then I'll start. A little quicker than last night. It usually takes me five minutes if anybody don't know what's really going on here. Because we got to wait for everything to sync up. We have a live chat room to the left. If you see comments to the left of the video, it's live. And we're talking about Fukushima. We're talking about the Discovery Channel and how, I'll uh, get back on track with that one, how unusual it was to see Trace come out and land on my site. And I, I said to myself, and it was an arrogant remark where he said he uh, buy him a plane ticket. Because people, somebody in the comment section had said that we should buy him a plane ticket and send him to Japan, which I agree with 100%. And I can't remember who it was, but that was an awesome comment. I'll find out. And he left a comment and reply, and I said to myself, eh, it could be somebody messing around. But then I went over to see what kind of a curb stomp and everybody gave him on his video. And you folks are outstanding. Like, you don't have to resort to um, just the facts. You don't have to name calling or anything like that and that's what you done right you just went over and stomped his head and yeah you know a bit of good old ribbon certainly nothing compared to what i say uh so you guys are extraordinarily polite compared to me in that standards which is really good because they can't use that against you and you don't need it right like anybody reads your comments it makes sense because you keep it simple and very clean and uh, very articulate but anyway, his comment was over on that video too. So now I said to myself, he's over on D News commenting. Um, so that had to be him. Otherwise, that's a pretty steep, stupid thing to do. Pretend that you're somebody on another site. And it was nonchalant comments. So that was him. So that was a desperate move. A hundred percent. And what happened was uh, Alex Jones, uh, Paul Joseph Watson had done an article, of course, and then he got hammered again. Uh, and so in desperation now he's he's like he's drowning he's drowning and so he come out looking to try to salvage it and try to make light of it and he's not stupid he's extraordinarily crafty but he is a little odd in the fact that why didn't he use because the worst thing you can do if you work in the light is come out and defend yourself publicly you're in deep fucking water when you do that sorry you're in deep huge water and that's what tonight's uh Lineup is all about. Uh, it's really something else I got put together tonight. Rain. I'll start it off from September 19, 2012. Uh, Simon Fraser University. 
20 million particles of radioactive iodine 131 per liter fell on the USA during post Fukushima peak. And so like there was a lot of the plumes came over that were really thick and we got the models from around the world. Uh, Japan made 5,000 models in the first 50 days. That's over 96 a day, but they kept them secret. Uh, that's quite the amazing one though, per liter. Per liter. I like to see uh, Troy go drink or Trey go drink some of that, or he's producer. I think he's the producer. That guy. Um, let me keep going for a few more first. A lawmaker in Canada. Serious questions arising about why the Canadian government failed to alert the public about radioactive rain after Fukushima. Let me come back to that 131, 20 million particles, I forgot, iodine 131. You can't have iodine 131 without iodine 129. And iodine 129 got a 15 million year half-life. Because um, it makes three iodines 131s, and then you make an iodine 129. Then it's three iodines 131 and an iodine 129. So when you're talking about 20 million becquels, or particles rather, particles, of radioactive iodine 131 fell on the US per liter of rainwater. Do you you know that's not gonna come into your soil? That's not gonna disappear. That's that's and like a popular place for people to go is the beaches, and so you got the runoff from the communities is running down onto the coastline and then runs out and it carries sediment with it. Uh, as a diver, I had fourteen uh, years experience, three hundred and fifteen days average a year on the ocean, six hours a day on the ocean floor. And so, like British Columbia in particular got, say, uh, 26,000 islands. It'd take you 71 years to visit every one of those islands. If you visit one a day, it would take you 71 years. And so, uh, a lot of bad weather, you would go hide behind the islands, and when you get all this rain uh, close to the coastline, uh, you couldn't get no visibility because of the sediment got carried out by the rain. And so I'm just trying to build you a picture because I've seen it repeatedly throughout my life anyway, but, but never so much as when I was a diver, you truly get that, right? And if you were surveying on the coastline, I would hang off the side of the boat with a rope around my wrist, and I would have to stick my head about a foot under the water because of all the fresh water during heavy rains coming off all the islands. Uh, there's so much more sediment and everything else. You had to get down about 12 inches before you can start seeing. And so that's kind of hard to do when you're wearing dry suits and you got air in your suit. Uh, it used to get on my nerves anyway, obviously. So you would wear 10 pounds of lead weights on each shoulder during heavy rains to be able to keep your head down. Because the fresh water makes it really difficult to see. But as soon as you get down to the layer of salt water, I digressed, I know. Um, but 20,000 particles, 20 million particles per liter, you can't drink that. You can't, you can't drink that. You can't survive something like that, drinking that kind of, uh, because that turns immediately into 132, and that gets absorbed by your thyroid glands uh, nine times better, more effectively. So they never tell you about that. And they always talk about iodine-131 with a half shelf life, but it's emblematic of a nuclear fusion. That's how we know it came from Fukushima. Let me keep going, because I got so much. I know I just digress. And then I covered serious questions arising about, and that was the... Um, that was also, you know, Simon Fraser, right? University, Chris. The serious questions are arising about why Canada failed. So I'll go keep going on that one now. Health Canada calls 300 times background levels of iodine, once again, 131. Forget about the iodine 129. And you can't have this without uranium and plutonium, by the way. Because, I mean, the reactors are made of uranium and plutonium. And by spraying all that salt water on it, you guarantee a whole lot of the buckyballs with the uh, uranium plutonium as a nucleus and there's a peer-reviewed academic study below that because this is such an unusual phenomenon there's only a couple of these studies out there how you're a prop so health canada is saying that it's 300 times above normal which is there's no such thing as normal for iodine 131 anyway because that's from the fusion that's from the, the explosion that's from the aerosol from the atomization of the hydrogen explosions. And there was four of those down there. One of them, they believe, of course, was a nuclear explosion, but they don't know which one for sure. It seems to me it was number three, uh, I'm pretty sure about. But Health Canada calling 300 times, right? 
300 times. And they've been clamping down on the scientists here in Canada for the last year or so because people are calling it up because that's the way Canadians are. They'll call you. They'll call up every office here and, hey, you know, who gave the decision not to tell us? That'll get more intense and they won't take no for an answer. Um, and they won't be rude about it. They'll get the answer. They'll, they'll catch them at their coffee shops. Pitiful. Now, this is today, January the 15th. Fukushima plume is hitting the west coast in Alaska any day now. No government agency is monitoring the ocean. They turned off all the detectors all along the coastlines. And let me keep going. Calgary Sun, January 22nd, 2012. No need to panic, probably, about Fukushima fallout that rained on Canada. The government hasn't even released the data. That's the Calgary Sun, the hugest paper in Calgary. That's a huge, one of the biggest money makers in Canada. There's no need to panic, probably, uh, because they hid away the data. And I'm getting to more of that, of course, about Canada and America. Cesium-137, once again, uh, this is a good one because it's got a 30-year, what they call a 30-year half-life. We've got to multiply that by 10 because of the way isotopes uh, degenerate to another radioactive isotope and then they got half-lives and then there's half of it left and it's still got a half-life and it still turns into and so it's 300 year life times 10 detected in Virginia rain um, June 24 2012 and next picture please oh. now Canada on March 19th and 20th flew along the coastline in their planes and they detected snowstorms Invisible snowstorms of radiation, and it's called evidence of sharp features in the Fukushima plume over southwest British Columbia. And we, and anybody who's been here for a while, uh, knows we covered that extensively. And that was Health Canada, and they never told the children on their way to schools during those bloom uh, peaks. But they weren't up there every day. It was just they happened to go up there, and they ran into the plume. The plume was coming out nonstop, so no matter what day they had to chose to go up there, they would have ran into it. And so the whole coastline is polluted. And so for Discovery Channel to come out with a video trying to make assertions is a desperate, they're in desperate mode at this stage. For them to come in on the video last night and assert that uranium and plutonium, because they got a long half-life, amazing long half-life, that they were the least ones to worry about, is a desperate, just like the bananas was desperate, we destroyed that, we eviscerated that ability because you can fill the room up with bananas it can't hurt nobody but if you take a little tiny piece of any of the uranium plutonium at fukushima that was aerosol a gram of it produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet a gram the size of a dime each pool had 12 foot rods and 122,000 of them 1535 bundles there was 80 rods in a bundle you can take any one of those rods, they're each 12 feet long, out of those 122,000, take a piece the size of a banana, and you can kill everybody in a restaurant inside of an hour. And you can do that every hour till the end of time with a piece the size of a banana, half the size of a banana. But I can fill the room up with bananas. I can't hurt anybody. He's not going to give anybody cancers. This will kill you right now. I won't finish that sentence. And he equated a banana with that kind of stuff. 234, uranium 235, plutonium 238, 239, 240, or 241. 24 million or 1,000 year half lives times 10. But they're so toxic, so deadly, they, they sequester in your body so readily. And then the evidence of the sharp features in the Fukushima plume over southwestern British Columbia, it shows just massive numbers. And that went on for 18 hours where they flew along the coastline. That plane should be on a nuclear waste site. Let me keep going for a few minutes. Independent French Radiation Commission warns Europe that health risk from Fukushima fallout is no longer ineligible. Says the U.S. West Coast had 8 to 10 times more contamination. It's just because the jet streams whisk it right away. The, the Pacific Garn starts right in front of Fukushima, the ocean currents, and whisks it right away. And what Japan has there is like this little back eddy in the front of it. And so it sucks it out and immediately gets whisked right across the ocean. And you got to think about how the ocean has different layers and different salinity and different temperatures and different speeds. And what they discovered through models and peer-reviewed academic study models is that that doesn't quite disperse. Like they claim, it, it disperses as it comes across the ocean, certainly, 
it doesn't dilute, it can't dilute. Radioactive isotopes only get, you know, they don't lose their energy. If those isotopes were out there for a billion years, you ingest it, it has just as much power as the very same day that it was released. Right? If they, lick, if they cremate your body after you die from the tumors, they liberate that isotope. And it can do that for another three and a half billion years at full strength, but it can go 45 billion years. Not that it matters. But it's, it's just the, the, the insidiousness of that's released into our society. Next, The next one was, and by the way, the date on that was April 11, 2011. Right, so a month later, that came out, and that was from uh, Euroactive, uh, the risk associated with iodine-131 contamination in Europe. August the 5th, 2011, members of Parliament in Canada, Health Canada is negligent on Fukushima radiation threats. And uh, that was a Liberal MP. Because there's so much iodine that you can't have all that iodine without having iodine-132, which gets sequestered into your thyroid, radiates your thyroid, ionizes your thyroid, because it's, it's a gamma, it's an ionizing nine times more effectively. But you can't have it without the plutonium and uranium. They all travel together. One didn't just stay over there and all the iodine came over to Canada and the United States. See? But and but the, 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 the madness of this is iodine's got a seven-day half-life. So it had to come from a meltdown. And so that's the emblematics. It had to come from Fukushima because there's three meltdowns there. The winds and the currents and the jet streams carried immediately over at 100 miles an hour it only takes 48 hours to reach me, and uh, 72 hours is right around North America. But th we've seen the models, and Trace had one of them in the video, the one with the Earth. That's the U.S.'s uh, dispersal model over a 40-day for CCM-137. And it shows the entire Northern Hemisphere. But, you know, this stuff comes right across, and we've seen all the other models where it slams into California and, and both, you know, the Pacific coastline in particular gets the brunt of it, there's no doubt about it. But it falls out for the next year or two. Let me keep going. <coughs> Plutonium escaped Fukushima reactors is gas. It was a colossal 9,000 degree Fahrenheit. So that, you know, rocks will melt at 2,000 degrees. It can't be detected with Geiger counters and terrible things are looming for the children. They must be evacuated, yet nothing's done. It's a criminal nation. October the 16th, 2013. Uh, that's frightening, you know. Plutonium 238, 239, 240. Uh, was detected at Fukushima Playgrounds uh, on August the 15th. TEPCO admitted they considered it to be from the triple meltdown. Of course it's from the triple meltdown. It was September the 3rd, 2011. And that was a TEPCO press release. Plutonium 238, 239, 240. And that was because it was aerosol on that previous story. Uh, plutonium escaped Fukushima reactors as gas, uh, 9,000 degree Fahrenheit inside. And so you think about 122,000 rods in the aerosol, you get up into the jet stream. And of course, that's why you're seeing the iodine showing all the way consistently through Canada along the coastlines. And what Discovery is doing is murdering people that fall for that. That's outright murder. They shouldn't even done it. Should have walked away. He should have just walked away. And they're so desperate now. He's out there with his own account trying to absorb some of the blowback. But Discovery Channel funded him, hired him, handpicked him because he's got an extraordinary education, an extraordinary amount of talent. He has an extraordinary gift. He has an unbelievable amount of training. It's a list like 20 pages of short paragraphs of his qualifications. Um, let me just read some of them for you. Hang on, seeing as we're here. He's tech savvy, strategic communicator with interest in media, politics, social networking. He's a specialist, administrator, Adobe Acrobats, Adobe Photoshop, Photoshop, business intelligence, content management, copy editing, customer relations, database administrations, event management, Final Cut Pro, Apple, marketing planning, medium relations, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft PowerPoints, 
Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Word, networking, newsletters, operating systems, press releases, research, sales, strategic communications, visual strategy, desktop publishing, website production, blogging, podcasting. And there's 20 pages of this. That's his official... Uh, so, you know, he like, and it's just producer, discovery, communications. He works for, he's a producer at Discovery Communications, which is Discovery Channel. Uh, new media intern at U.S. House of Representatives when he was younger. So he worked for the House of Representatives. He was a digital media intern at Discovery. Assistant web editor at J Labs. Uh, he's a very, very talented person. He's not stupid. He's very um, savory. He's quite the yuppie, a trendy um, we should send him down to that playground where there's 238, 239, 240 plutonium. See how he likes that for a day. See how happy he is when he's on the camera that day. Let me see him post his videos up on YouTube that day. Radioactive sulfur in California spiked the highest levels ever detected. That was California, that was Bloomberg. Uh, California scientists wit witnessed a spike in radioactive airborne particles. Let me go to the next one. Unprecedented spike. 1,501 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter. Now, there's a link below about that. And as you can see, buckyballs as a slang for everybody uh, per square uh, cubic meter of air. So if you're walking along, you know, like a cubic meter of air, uh, unless all those 1,500 atoms move out of the way, you can't help but ingest that. And this is uh, extraordinary. It's extraordinary where they don't even tell you when it's peaking to stay indoors. They don't tell your children to take a day off school. But if there's a snowstorm, oh, don't you know, you stay home. Or if there's a, a Boston alleged uh, event going on, they want to lock you in your house and kick in your doors. But they don't want to do anything for you when all the plumes come through and they know. And they got all the monitor stations, that's why you paid them. Then you got Discovery Channel, who you trust to give you some decent information, and then they lie and manipulate you, your loved ones who are vulnerable and still watch them, who are gullible, unfortunately, but have been indoctrinated. And then people with an education like Trace will take advantage of all these people and just keep asserting it and telling people, go back and watch his old videos. Uh, he's not getting paid on the views. He's getting paid on the content. He's a PR. That's what his specialist is. He's a PR. And he's open to anybody, particularly right now, no one would touch him on the nuclear industry, uh, but he does have a history of chemistry at university. 1,501 atoms. And he's like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Go, go murder your children. Go live in that. Meanwhile, he's not down there. Health Canada detected, this was the Vancouver paper, massive amounts of radioactive material from Fukushima. But uh, Trace has never showed up here. But, oh, no, you know... No matter how many stories I could tell you tonight, iodine-131 spiked above maximum allowed limits at four of five uh, sites. That was August 4, 2011, to Georgia Straits. A Vancouver seaweed, four times higher than international limits, but we got 14 million beckles right off of California. Uh, iodine-131 again, which can't exist without iodine-129, which can't, none of these can exist without uranium plutonium. None of them can, can really exist with the strontium. Uh, and so they just keep coming up with the iodine, 131, iodine, 131, iodine. But they ignore the facts that the reactors don't run on iodine, that they run on plutonium and uranium, and that you can't have one without the other. And so when, the minute you hear it's there, then everything else has to be there. And like you say, you can go into your local water where they're getting all the water for your communities and test that stuff, and you'll find out what's really going on. They don't even care. They just don't. They decided that for a paycheck, they can keep it keep the shit alive for another couple of years. And they're not going to get no pension. They're poisoning their own children, their own loved ones. Trace is poisoning his own loved ones all day, every day. He done that every day on purpose in real life. He told them, oh yeah, he believes what he's saying because he has to in order to have a stupid job. Can you imagine what, what, what he would be like if he came over to the good side? How effective with all that kind of training and ability and skills, talent. Uh, the only thing is missing is morals and ethics, obviously. He doesn't have that, period. <coughs> Department of Homeland Security funded a study up to 430 uh, PICOs, what is it? I can't remember. PCI per liters. 
But that's 37 beckles, basically, per count. There's 430 counts. That's uh, 16,000, right? I've done the math on it today. San Francisco Bay Area rainwater per liter. 16,000 beckles? Woo-hoo! I see uh, Mr. Big Shot D News. You know, with that education, take a bat in it. Now, um, that's per cubic meter. And it's a Pico Curry's per liter. And so there's radioactive iodine 131 levels in um, Pennsylvania and Massachusetts rainwater exceeded contamination levels permitted in drinking water iodine 131. Again, in rainwater, it had to come from a recent nuclear meltdown. Once again, Discovery Channel is so friggin' wrong over and over and over. Fukushima fallout in New Hampshire, radioactive iodine at 12,000 atoms per square meter in the sediment from all the, you know, the rain, the fallout. Uh, who, you know, that was April 2nd, 2012, uh, Dartmouth College. But of course, you know, none of this matters unless it comes from D News website or it comes from the Huffington Post. It doesn't matter unless it comes from Fox News. It doesn't matter that you give you the best on the planet. It doesn't matter. High radiation levels near Tokyo linked to Fukushima. Rain caused 29,250,000 becquels per square meter in the soil. In the soil, see? And you get this all over California. You get this all over San Francisco. You get this all over Seattle where you're breathing in 10 hot particles a day. Canada, local official advising residents not to drink rainwater after test fine increasing, increasing radiation under pressure from government to stop testing. April 8, 2011. Old mascot, Masset, that's top of the Charlottes. That's broken ass islanders uh, territory. Nuclear expert, I should make clear that if the EPA safe drinking water level doesn't apply to rainwater, nothing does. April 5, 2012. Uh, China Central Television, USA, USA Radioactive uh, Materials. September the 5th, 2013, nuclear expert, Fukushima contamination that will soon hit the U.S. has people very concerned, and I think rightly so. The government should be regularly monitoring seawater and, and seafood and then rainwater because the rain picks it up from the ocean and brings it into your communities. Right? You don't have to be a genius to work this out. Striking nuclear policy experts striking that radioactive iodine, 131, again, seven-day half-life. Forget about the 129. Forget the fact that you can't have it without having the uranium plutonium because reactors are uranium plutonium. they got nothing to do with iodine. Iodine is just emblematic. You can find that with, a, with Geiger counters that are calibrated for the 131. That's usually the cheap ones, the cheap Geiger counters, but you got them calibrated, so the government uses that. And so they go and find out because they don't want the employees going shit. Just found all kinds of plutonium and uranium, right? They can't have that going out there. So they got these. But what that really means, anybody that's paying attention or even have half a friggin' clue, and someone like D knows who's supposed to do research, who's supposed to actually vet something, instead of coming out always consistently as a PR campaign, just an assault upon the people that think they're actually getting information. It's an utter betrayal. It's it's. Uh, it's disgusting. It's pathetic. It really, truly is criminal. I mean, the, they got the laws changed through lobbyists, but that's illegal what they're actually doing because they're a corporation. And you can go after them. No one, no one, no one can get a uh, jail fine for murdering people through a campaign of propaganda that's meant to really, uh, you know, to uh, take the vulnerables and make them stay where they are without even thinking about it, raise their children up in an area where it's highly contaminated without even considering it. Uh, and doing it to his own loved ones on top of that is really something else when you look at the education he got. What a creature. You wouldn't want that on your street. You wouldn't want to be living in the same city as that person. So once again, radioactive iodine 131 in California rainwater is so far above level permitted in drinking water uh, that they just couldn't hold it back anymore. New York Times, California confirms California rainwater 181 times above Iodine 131, right, coming right from Fukushima, over and over and over the night, D News, over and over and over the night, Discovery Channel, and all you other bootlicking, cheerleading, 
monkeys out there that work for the PR firms. You, you cowards, you traitors. This is real. You can't have one without the other. This is discovered everywhere. It's everywhere. Radioactive fallout and rain is 10 times more than originally reported. Um, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology admitted that they have made a mistake on the reports about fallout in the rain from Fukushima. Radioactive fallout, you know, I just don't know. Radioactive iodine, 131, 18,000 percent more now in San Francisco rainwater. In the rainwater, in the rain that's falling out of the sky. It's in the rainwater. It's coming here right in right now. And D-News can't find none of that. They can show you a banana though. They can make fun and insult everybody and try to marginalize everybody for a paycheck. For a paycheck. For an advancement up a ladder of murder. What kind of career is that? What kind of moral or ethics does a person with so much talent have that they would do something like that and that Discovery Channel sought that person out? Does that tell you anything about Discovery Channel? Right, always flip it off, never subscribe to it, and put in complaints. Go to their site and complain about this person. Equating a banana with uranium-234, 235, with iodine-129 is not a small thing, okay? We'll remember that. We'll never forget that. And this was on March 31st, San Francisco, 18,000% above in the rainwater. Iodine, once again, always iodine-131. Radioactive rain caused 130 schools in April 7, 2011 in Korea to close because they got them some morals. They got some ethics. Russia closed and got rid of 7,500 communities because of radiation poisoning. America and Canada will just fucking stay there and die. And you're not even going to get to get your pension out of it, the people that are doing it to you. They get a paycheck for another couple of years before it all goes to shit because we all got air doses at the same time. April 7, 2011, yet rain in California had 10 times more radioactivity and they never opened their mouth, the media. People like uh, D News and Discovery Channel, the people that so many people in our country depend upon for just reasonable information, for some kind of warning because they live a busy life. You know, they're paying their taxes and, they're, and D News and that, they're scamming the governments for money all the time. That's how they live. They're parasitic on the system itself. Iodine 131. Iodine 131. Why do they keep saying iodine 131 over and over and over and over and over and over? Is to indoctrinate themselves, I would imagine. That's not their, that, you know, we never elected our politicians to hide it from us. We elected them to prepare and do the right, the moral and ethical thing, like Korea, South Korea closed down 130 schools because the iodine showed up there. The Americans get it 10 times worse and they don't close down a single school. They let the kids walk through that. When it's peaking, when it's, you know, when these big plumes are coming through. And then they kind of try to warn you and tell you all the time, Al-Qaeda is going to get you with a dirty bomb. But they fired 5.5 million rounds a month in Iraq. Half of that were dirty bombs, every one of them. The A-10 Warthog, that only shoots dirty bombs. Uh, if it's shooting full steam, it's a ton and a half a minute, dirty bombs. That's 700. I'm sorry, um, 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation, the animosity equivalent, uranium-238, coming out of the A-10 Warthog. And they glorify that in movies. They glorify that in the media. They glorify that at the uh, Discovery Channel. And the 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of dirty radiation in people's countries that... That's what they're glorifying that you don't understand, that no one tells you, that they know, that they get that, they knew that, they had access to that, they had access to everybody because they kept their mouth shut and done what they were told. That's how they got to where they are. And that's what Dino's is doing, they're working their way up, hoping to get on TV land. He's done. He's finished. Uh, so radioactive rain caused 130 schools in Korea to close, but... Ten times that, the rain in California, and they don't even open their mouths. Cowards. These are cowards. That was April. Uh, that was April the 7th, 2011. October 19, 2013. Concerns about rain on the U.S. West Coast. 
having a Fukushima contamination. The monitoring efforts or vigilance should be stepped up October 19th. TV. Vancouver, Canada radiation tests showed iodine 131 in rainwater at almost 100 times the U.S. Uh, murder rate of uh, what they put in their water. They keep raising the levels. Right? They just keep raising radiation levels and then you say, oh, it's just background radiation levels. And uh, they collect their check and go home. Just like Trace at Discovery Channel. It's going to lie to everybody for a PR firm. That's what, he that's what he is. That's what he specializes in licking every PR firm's boots out there or whatever else is necessary to get the contract for Discovery Channel. He don't walk funny because of no particular reason. He walks funny because <laughs> of a real reason. 100 times the limit in Canada and they hid it from us. Just like that uh, sharp lines in Canada I was talking about earlier and there's a link below to that link uh, about the Canadian Health Canada flying along our coastline 18 hours. Iodine 131, Canadian official, in rainwater was above recommended levels for drinking water during March. It should not exceed the guidelines. The government failed to disclose the findings. So even on a little bit, they still fail to disclose. Even on, you know, just double, whatever they call it. But I mean, they if they sniffed it early, or they, or they didn't double, you know, there's so many little things on that one. 27,000 becquels a kilogram of cesium in a kindergarten near west coast of Japan. I like to see Trace go down there. Anybody from Discovery Channel, we should raise enough money to send him down there. That's what he asked for, right? He's out there now in desperation with his original account because he's in deep shit, because everybody's gone after him now. He can't get a word in sideways, and he's just going to try to blow it all off and go to work for another murderer down the road, hopefully. Go do what he can. Rather than let the PR firms deal with it, he's going to go, because he that's how cocky he is, and he thinks he can salvage it, or he's driven out the door by a Discovery Channel, more likely. 27,000 becquels, 200 kilometers from the meltdowns. 27,000 becquels. A cesium in the kindergarten near the west coast of Japan. That's crazy. Canada denies refugee status to a Japanese trying to escape Fukushima radiation because they were radioactive. Their poop is radioactive. They're walking uh, dirty bombs. Unbelievable, eh? But it's true. Cesium followed spike to 349 million becquels per square kilometer in one day at Fukushima City. Wait, so if it spiked in that whole kilometer, it went up, got into the jet streams, and was over here 48 hours later, depositing it all around the coastline. At, you, you know, 1,500 radioactive atoms per meter. So it's a snowstorm right through that entire coastline. That's the only way you can get something like that. A persistent, pestilent snowstorm that uh, radiated all the way um, for many weeks from, if not much longer than that, at intense, in high intensities, from Seattle, certainly, all the way down to Mexico. Uh, like I said, once again, Russia evacuated 7,500 communities back in the late 40s, permanently, 9,000 square kilometers off limits because it's, you know, it's radiated, and that's what you got to do, unfortunately. But that was the right thing to do, and that's what they've done. So people wouldn't get horrible cancers. And what D news doesn't care about his own loved ones either or any of his friends or any of his relatives or any of his anybody out there when because he's smart enough to know different he packaged that together and sold it uh, in a um, a pack with the devil uh, literally because what I'm showing you here tonight you know you can't deny let me get this uh Government submits to plutonium-238 detected in locations far from Fukushima plant, September 30, 2011. Fukushima fallout in New Hampshire, radioactive iodine at 12,000 12, atoms per square meter in the sediment. That's from the rain out, right? But that's going to keep going because it went into the troposphere and the stratosphere and the atmosphere because these rods kept caving in and still are on top of these hot coriums that are reaching temperatures of 9,000 degrees, which is, you know because of the chain reaction, and then all the salt water that's getting on that. It's, and I'm like, we're, like, we're not even covering what's going into the ocean very much tonight, all day, every day, non-stop, 
and because they had the four detonations on their site and the rods went all over that site and down into the topsoil and they have to keep that perpetually wet otherwise it becomes fusion because there's so many other metals there uh, from the explosion you got to realize these rods are 12 feet long 122,000 per pool but they're made of pellets right and so this was blown all over the place and atomized and aerosol and there was raging fires repeatedly on that site at the fuel pools themselves and the spent fuel pool they have to be in the pool for 30 years because they're so uh, toxic so and that's meant to hold down the neutrons and that get it to slow down after 30 years and then put it into cast they can't build a cast to hold it for many for the last five decades they dump it into the ocean 45 gallon drums even though the license says that they're going to build cast to hold all that contaminant they were putting it in the bullets and still are for many decades now and but it's all coming out and you can't stop the fact that we got a dead ocean Fukushima fallout, New Hampshire, April 2nd, 2012. Once again, that's from rain, 12,000 atoms per square centimeter of soil, or meter of soil. Fukushima government deleted the radiation forecast data starting the date of the quake. I can't confirm who did it. March 21st, 2012, the Daily Umari. They created 5,000 studies about the plumes, the aerosol plumes from the reactors at Fukushima in the first 52 days. That's how much was coming out of there, that they created 96 models a day for themselves. And then they were going to move Tokyo 250 miles west, the capital, with the government, 200,000 government employees and 50,000 slaves and their families, of course, but leave everybody else in Tokyo and move them west because the winds, prevailing winds around Tokyo are west. Yet they found the radiation all the way up to the end of the west coast, right up to the very top of it, up to 300,000 becquels per square meter of ground. All of Tokyo is at least that much, if not up to a million becquels per square meter, and much higher in some places where children are walking to school every day. And uh, they're getting lethal doses as they go past that. The government uh, is over the top. Their job was to protect the public and then do the right and ethical thing. And they actually made plans to evacuate all of Tokyo, and then they decided not to. Then they decided that they're going to murder all their citizens. And in order to do that, they got internet blackout, and they got a law implemented where nobody can now question them. They are the ultimate authority. They can just make it up as they're going along. And they rammed that through Parliament so they can retroactively cover up the 5,000 studies that they hid away, for starters, because that's criminal. Fukushima Part 2, Tokyo, to begin burning massive amounts of radioactive waste from the disaster area. The burns will continue for at least 2.5 years. You liberate all that plutonium and uranium isotopes. That's where that heavy stuff went there. So now we're really, we're talking about incinerators, so they're going to superheat this stuff and burn it. And that's going to go right up into the jet streams and get carried right over to North America and Canada, period. And that's ongoing right now. Multiple marine scientists say Fukushima plume is at the west coast. But D News is like, uh, you know, banana. Don't And like the headline, don't worry about radiation. The most arrogant thing imaginable. Without no substance, without any representation. With some guy with a computer and a lot of skill and some pictures. And an idiotic porn movie, uh, music that he uses in it. And stole the model from one of my cover pictures. Go back to my videos and you'll see the model of Earth. A blue model of Earth with the plumes around the top of him. Go watch that. That's the one he got in his video. It's only a short video. And that shows the cesium-137 circumventing the Northern Hemisphere. And this got a life of 300 years. But that's dear. It had to be. Everything else had to be dear. The uranium and the plutoniums, the strontiums, the cesiums. The many, many different types and variations of the isotopes that are weaponized, that we don't need, we never need it, that are only meant for weaponized industrial complex, for directed energy weapons, that have no benefit to society outside of mass murder. That's all, there, that's all the machine does, it's mass murder. You got 5 million uh, orphans in Afghanistan. They get 11,000 Taliban. I mean, that's what Dean knows. He sucks that up. I see him go down to Fukushima and give all the homeless coming out of there when they're finally released from Fukushima site 
uh, a baseball cap and tell him uh, have a nice day. You know, because he doesn't understand that. Discovery Channel should have to go down there and apologize to everybody coming out of that plant every day. Uh, we, we will raise the money if they really want to go down there. Radiated, radiation levels from Fukushima on the California coast is everywhere, folks. Um, new evidence have emerged that the radiation in Canada was worse than Canadian officials ever let on. Hey, gee, you don't say? October the 20th, um, 2011. It's a radioactive cover of Vancouver, October the 20th. As uh, Georgia Strait. So they were showing levels of 6.6 uh, .6 Beckwells square kilometer. It was 160 million. 6.6 .6 million Beckwells per square kilometer of cesium-134. Uh, it was actually 160 million Beckwells. And they were showing levels of uh, 8 million Beckwells per square kilometer of cesium-137. And the levels were actually 200 million Beckwells per square kilometer. That was uh, July 11th. In July uh, 19, it was 750 million Beckwells and 590 million Beckwells of cesium-134 in Canada. Amazing. Unbelievable. And so they were hiding at uh, radioactive iodine-131 in Pennsylvania. Rainwater samples is 3,300% above federal drinking water. But D-News is like, there's no evidence here. All this night, no evidence is here, he keeps saying. Severe into U.S. government considered immediately evacuating all citizens living in Japan, including the entire military. Wow, that was Janu January 31, 2013. August 23, 2011. Uh, oh yeah, Fairwinds come out once again and asserted that burning those clouds of radioactive uh, debris that they burn that should be on a nuclear waste site. That's what the license is calls for. But they burn it. And so some of that goes all over the communities in Fukushima and some of it gets up into the jet streams. And because they're incinerating at high temperatures, right, or lots of it, because you can incinerate that as hot as you want, you can't kill it. It's created at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit. It's burning it up in an incinerator, ain't gonna hurt it. Rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine, 131 per liter, fell on the U.S. during post-Fukushima peak. Right? So, there you go. That, to me, is the reason that, you know, we just got to take that stand and push back harder every friggin' day. And then when we find people like that, just do the best we can is all we can hope for. Give, give them a good reaming. Take them off the wall. This is this is my represent of, representation of them right here. This is my idea of uh, him. He's got three eyes. I ran out of glue. Sorry. He's got a, his mouth is always open, right? And he's always got the big cheeks. Hello, everybody. Have you got your rags today? Have ya? Oh, have ya? No Dana on my head, Dana. No Dana on my head. You better be good. I give it to you. I'm not afraid of you anymore. Lawyers. This is my PR firm. Now he's got an extra set of legs because he loves his radiation. Right? So we gotta give him an extra set of legs and three eyes. And then he got he's got trendy hair. And we'll just poke him in there. And there every once in a while. Pop. Oh, it's a little early there, a little premature, but that actually felt so good. Because everything I read you tonight shows you that these are mass murderers, that they could have done that too. They could have found other ways to marginalize all of that by just saying, yeah, there's a lot there, you know, you might want to clean your boots off once in a while, blah, blah, blah. Something. Throw them a bone anyway. But they choose to say nothing's here, that there's nothing found here. That it doesn't exist, and that people like me, who do nothing but read you the facts, the peer review academic studies, just to show you that there's actually is a whole lot of other narratives from a whole lot of different people, and that you can go out to anywhere on the planet 
if you tried, and they have the skills, they have the technology, they have the ability, they have the drive to get to where they were. They certainly could have went out and found some of that, right? And then they would have had a conscience. And they would say, well, I can't come out and equate it with a banana because a banana's got nothing to do. You can fill the house up with bananas. It can't hurt me. But if I got a little tiny piece of any of those rods, I don't get to finish the sentence. And when even those as aerosol, if I breathe any of those, just one of those radioactive hot particles in, I'm going to get cancer. That'll sequester in my body right away. It'll do that much more effectively to a child. It'll melt their organs if they get the uranium or the plutonium in there. They're extremely vulnerable. It goes into the breast, and so all breast cancers are ionizing radiation. And it's just the government just decided that they're going to keep covering it up get all the natural resources for themselves, keep collecting a paycheck, to hell with the to hell with the pensions, they'll loot it from the inside while they're doing all this, they know it's all going to shit, and they've made a conscious decision not to inform anybody in order to keep the to keep the, the, the taxes coming in just a little bit longer, to keep the law alive. Instead of uh, doing the right thing, the moral thing, the ethical thing, they turn their back on society as a whole in the hope that uh, in the future, there'll be some spot for them that somebody will continue to let them lick their boots. And, uh, you know, we got to destroy people like that. we got to make sure they don't ever get away with it anymore. we got to keep, you know, we got to hold them to account. And the only way you're accountable right now is to expose them as the, the traitors of humanity, the actual monsters in humanity. These are the creatures that hide away in the dark and will hurt you and your loved ones at any opportunity for a paycheck. They're, they're uh, capable of going any other direction. They've chosen that direction. They get off on that. They're the epitome of a psychopath. Yeah, well, he's not going to tear his legs off. Right, dickhead? That's radiation dickhead. And you'll be back for another night. So will I. But I went and dug all that up today because I had to come out for one more kick at that can. I can't handle the fact that people like this would show up on my video and have the arrogance to leave a comment without saying, you're right, Dana, I should have kept my mouth shut. Because that's what they should have done. They should have just not, not show up on my show, so because I wouldn't have made this video tonight if they had done that. Never done that. Discovery Channel needs to get rid of them. I'm going to include it every night, a piece of this for sure, from here on out. I want it gone. Drives me nuts. <clears throat> and like I said, I got 20 pages of his education there. It's crazy. He can make money doing anything. Why does he choose to destroy people's lives with fake and manipulative, uh, poorly, poorly chosen examples about Fukushima? Okay, well, there you go. We wind her down. How long did I go this time? 52 minutes. Am I still streaming? I'm showing some key framing rates going on here. Health is good. I'm assuming everything is okay. We'll come and check it all out after. Helen Caldicott, excellent lunar. Nuda, Sam Smith. Thanks, Sam. Sergeant. Yeah, anything. Well, Japan, they got an internet black here, Sergeant, so we'll never know. Because that, that applies. All the governments are working together to keep this away, right? Yeah, hi Mickey, Nuru, Annabeck. Did I see Miss Milky here? Because I never even looked at the comments tonight. My apologies, folks. Uh, Annabeck, Troy. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. They need another shot. They need another round. That's why I'm here tonight. Troy, Starlight, Mark, Cats Alive. You guys were pretty funny last night. I really enjoyed that. Uh, reading all the comments. It's a good way for me to wind down anyway. I don't know about you folks, but I like to wind down. I listen to a lecture, read through the comments. I had a few good ha-has, for sure. Because I'm starting to learn people now, so. I seen uh, Ivan went back over D-News today. He's over there sprouting his stuff on D-News. How interesting is that? How interesting is that after last night? Same stuff, too. Sergeant, you bit, buddy. Lisa... Hi everybody, Freelance Ryan, James, Sylvia, Kathleen, Bob, thank you, baby mama. I'll try to get a few of you folks in tonight. Kathleen Douglas, Rob, Basic Data, Annie, uh, Cucumber, 
42, Elizabeth again, Nuda, DZ, you're welcome, Lunar, try again, Lani, hi Lani, thank you, Moments Nothing More, Sam, you folks are so awesome, I appreciate your support, what can I say, we're back every night, that's what we're all doing, Sam, Smith, uh, Green Row Project, always glad, you got some great stuff there folks, there's links below my videos, The Missing Sky, uh, Nuber Magic, everybody out there that is working so hard to find information. They find all kinds of cool interviews, all kinds of lectures, and they get it up on their site in good quality, with good descriptions. And you can't ask for any better than that. That's why they're under the video. Mama Knox is at it all the time. Uh, you're welcome. Candace, I say thank you all the time because I truly mean that. Thank you, right? Um, I'm no different than you. We are one, right? There's no doubt about it. We're a team. And this team will be back tomorrow night with another big old head to give a few rounds to, I can be sure. I might have to analyze this video tonight. And thanks, Bob, Freelance, Kevin, Candace, and Bob, we're going to go up and sign out. It's just because I'm getting a lot of red, use keyframe frequencies of two seconds. I had to set it one second. I have to reset it each night now. And it'll cause buffering, so i got to go and see if that happened to me. But I'll be reading comments anyway, so if I made mistakes, if the stream was weird, and you guys would have told me, I'll probably see it. But I'll have to go and check just to make sure. We had a peak tonight of 174 people. It's a good thing I don't check that till the end of the movie, end of the videos, because I, I don't know what I'm like during a big stream of people. So I never look at the numbers um, till after. Okay, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Thank you. We'll get out and kick their ass again. There's some funny comments. You should go read the comments over on D News's video. There's some funny stuff going on over there. Okay, folks.